We have a special guest with us today. You know, it's a little unconventional, it being a Tuesday, but you know, we've got to keep things spicy right here on Spice FM. We can't be predictable. We can't be. We have to, you know, we have to give them, show them that we still have life here. You know, we're, we, we got to, we've got a great conversation coming up. But before we actually do that, I would love to chime in on some of your thoughts on the conversation we've just had, plus go through roll call and see where everybody is. Uh, let me read one comment about the conversation we've had. Zachary Gikonya says, Hi guys, you look good. Bad boy, sweetheart, welcome back. And ha. Uh -huh. By the way, while you were away yesterday, the ladies declared me MC M M MCM. Yes, you are oh, MCM yesterday. Okay. Yes, and we still appreciate you for that. Now, it would take angels' interventions for anyone not to cheat these days. For example, for women, the fashion industry has made sure that they look and smell superb by inventing perfumes and body care products that make them remain sweet 16s forever. As a man, unless you move around covering your eyes, you cannot fail to drool over beautiful women in the streets. For women, they cheat for these two reasons. Uh, convince themselves that they are truly an empowered as girl child manifesting their independence. Two, they definitely need extra coin to get them from the men. And of course, the rendering obvious essential services. It is a multi-billion dollar industry and women are largely the biggest beneficiary. Now, uh, uh, Carigo, I mean not Carigo, uh, Zachary, I do not dispute part of what you're saying but i'm also going to ask you this question for the men why do they cheat you've only talked about women mm. secondly i feel women cheat for various reasons mm -hmm. and we ne we need to stop narrowing it down because while our, our worlds have changed we've had men i mean men and women cheating for revenge mm -hmm. yes because their partner has done that mm. we've had people who i would call them they're sick maybe it's a disorder mm. they are bisexual and they like running from one person to the other mm. well, this is something that is happening in our country mm. their sexual urges are just not controlled sometimes it's demonic and yeah you need <laughs> prayers but let us be very serious about it mm. some people cheat because it's it's a lifestyle for them and and uh, they don't know how to stop it. Mm. And others, and when someone is cheating for issues of money, let us just not lie for it. It is, uh, we are elevating the world, you know, like the, the, those ladies for the twilight. Mm. There's no difference with, 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 between you who's cheating because you want to get money mm. and you leave your relationship and that lady of the streets. Yeah. So let's not... Uh, Sugar coat. coat it. It is what it is. And, the, and both men and women mm -hmm. in our town right now, we are failing in that department. And, and there are people who cheat because they are bored. <laughs> yeah, I heard mm. someone saying that. Yes, someone was They are bored, bored, so, yes, bored. People cheat. And these days, women and both men, yeah. they really do very interesting things. Now, back to roll call. Gladys from Gladwell from Vihiga. I see you. And Arnold will be visiting Vihiga very soon. He says that. Though he left us and went to Abadea alone. Clemo from <laughs> Timorawa, I see you. Yegon, I I see you <laughs> from the city of champions. Jack, you know Karigo is true what I'm saying. Oh Tell it you what. <laughs> Deborah, I see you from Eldoret. Timo, I see you and everyone else. You can chime in on this contribute this show and any other thing that we talk about through our social media handles, Spice FM KE on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Most importantly, today we have a guest, and the topic of discussion is very interesting. So I would like you to go. And if you're able to just stream live, this is a very beautiful guest. So yes, go live, go take your phone, take your gadget, take your smart, uh, they're called smart TVs. Mm -hmm. uh, smart TVs. Mm -hmm. www.spicefm.co.ke. Click visual, not audio. Audio ni kama video. But if you're very busy and you're cooking, just click audio. Yes. But you have, if you have a chance, click visual. Then you'll get to see us. Hi in high definition yes it's video. Uh, yes hd just 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 don't look at my skin it's a bit dry today i ran out of lotion no why are you telling me i'm, jo I'm no, joking I'm, I'm joking make sure you jump okay, on our social media when we're going break. <laughs> <laughs> so now let us transition into the hot topic because i am very excited to get into today's conversation like i said we have an amazing guest and you're going to want to have your pens and your pencils and your erasers ready because we are about to be schooled on things that i think we all need to know about today we have carol chakua in the building which i am so excited for and she's here to talk to us about overcoming childhood trauma as as an adult uh that is dr 
Let me make that. Make, let me just make sure I'm using you correctly. I was like, are you serious <laughs> right now? Are you me, not seeing the yes. dr dot? Let me make sure. I, let me. In fact, let me even just do that again. Let me make sure I'm introducing you properly. So we have Dr. Carol Chakua in the building, who's here to talk to us about overcoming childhood trauma. And the reason I said that you need to be ready is because this lady is incredibly educated. She has a myriad of qualifications, and she's very well certified. And mm -hmm. when I when I knew that she was coming, yeah. I made sure that I was ready. How yeah. are you? I am great. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you in the building. Yes. Thank yes. you so much for coming. I, I know there's going to be a lot of value that people are going to get out of having you here today. Yeah. Um, and let's let's not waste any time. Let's let's get into the into the conversation now. Before we Absolutely. start, for anybody who is unfamiliar with who you are and what you do, please give us your uh, your introduction. Okay, I'm Carol Chakua. Um, if you must, doctor. <laughs> 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 I, I I wear many hats. I'm mm -hmm. a mom. I'm also a therapist. I teach uh, psychology at the university. And what I do now with a lot of passion is parent coaching. So mm -hmm. I work with parents, basically helping them focus on themselves first. Mm -hmm. So there are wow. many parenting tips out there you can get. Mm -hmm. But you don't really get enough tips and tools on how to really work on yourself so that you can show up. And dealing with childhood traumas is a huge part of what I do mm -hmm. when I work with parents. When you're talking about dealing with child traumas, are you dealing with the traumas the parents have or the, uh, the traumas that they, their children have? Which of the two do you deal with? I deal with what the parent brings in. And, you know, most of the time, they will not even know that part of what they're bringing into their parenting space is childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. So they wow. come to me because... My child is having issues, behavioral issues. Um, I think I'm just yelling too much or, man, I chappered my child and mm. I really regret. And I just think I'm ruining my child, you know, <laughs> because they have issues yeah. with themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it always traces back to how they were parented. So, yes, okay. I deal with their own issues, which come in a very subtle way. Mm. And in a way that if you tell someone directly, you know, we're going to deal with the issues in your past, they'll be like, nah, <laughs> I don't have. I'm not, I don't have. You yeah. deal with the issue. Yes. You deal with the kid. You yes. know? This yeah. one is one of the problems. Yes, that's where the problem is. And mm. I've lost some clients because mm. they're like, no, you stop focusing on me right ah. i turned out okay right yeah. so. right how, how do you i guess how do you break through that because that can obviously be a very difficult thing to navigate having to tell someone the reason these problems exist might be linked to something that you experienced when you were young how do you how do you break through that conversation it's you ease in really slowly because really you have to sit and listen to the issue you know in therapy we call the presenting issue mm -hmm. whatever it is they come with and really just let them know look this is important to you this is what we are going to to mm -hmm. deal with mm -hmm. but then you know you know with skill and experience over time you just begin to get them to just sort of to inspire them to be better mm -hmm. because one of the things i tell parents is really let's put aside the issues to do with the behaviors, mm -hmm. let's first of all focus on how you are showing up. Right. The dynamics of your relationships with your children. Let me support you in having a better relationship with your child. Mm. That really draws them in. Right. Because they're like, yeah. Mm. And then, you know, we've learned and we know that relationship really is like the basis for all these other outcomes. Mm. Yes. So if you go the relationship way, you draw them in better. I see. Uh, I so see. you're having a conversation with one of your patients. And they can't remember their childhood trauma. Why does this happen? And how does somebody get over this or begin to now reach a place whereby they are able to unpack their childhood trauma? You know, <laughs> not remembering is part of the symptoms of trauma. You wow. know, because you, you um, sort of suppress it. Mm. You know, but, uh, by nature, human beings, we, we are pleasure seeking. Mm. We're mm -hmm. pleasure seeking. And so, and especially as a child, you experience something traumatizing, you quickly suppress it. Mm. Okay. Because you don't even have, you're not even mature enough. Your brain hasn't matured enough to even process those traumatizing events. Mm -hmm. They are not supposed to happen, you okay. know. Sexual abuse is not supposed to happen, yeah. you know, mm. uh, verbal abuse, whatever, physical abuse is not supposed to happen. Yeah. So it, it's too much. So uh, burying it, that's part of uh, the process of yeah. just, it's, it's a coping mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that happens a lot. And, you know, it does take a lot of uh, 
uh, unpacking. Unpacking and how yeah. you do that really is just providing a very safe space uh. for them to be able to even acknowledge yeah. that it happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing that I want to know is for any adult listening and they're wondering, did I go through trauma as a child? And I don't know. Mm. The signs and the symptoms. What, how do they look like? Just simple, basic. What are the few common warning signs of someone living with trauma? I think a question. I also want to add, how do we then actually define what trauma is? Yeah. Mm. Yes. So let's start with that, yes. actually, because it will make more sense yeah. to unpack it that way. Trauma is how we respond to something that has happened to us that is distressing mm. and we don't have enough resources to manage it uh -huh. okay so many times we think trauma is the event but mm. trauma is actually the reaction to it how right. we respond to wow. it mm -hmm. okay so how we respond to it is one we suppress it you know two we we fight back mm -hmm. you know there's there's the fight or flight response we mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. because that's like now when danger comes that's what you do so gosh i wish i had like four basic ways to say <laughs> to be, yeah. this is how yes. but, yeah. but it's it's not possible because people are so different it depends on temperament it depends on the how severe the trauma was yeah. sometimes you will have four siblings yes gone through the same experiences yes. it manifests so differently when they are grown up one is forever you know clingy and and always talking about you know this is what happened when yeah. we were young mm -hmm. and the other sibling is like uh did that happen in exactly. all life? no yeah or where was the, i yeah, where was i, was I when by this the way was yeah because we remember things differently, differently also yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. we, we there are things we just choose to focus on and then someone else is like yeah it happened but hello let's just move, let's on. move on yeah why do we keep going back mm -hmm. so really how it manifests later in adulthood mostly has to do with now uh, in our relationships mm -hmm. and i tell parents especially parents when you have children you have no choice mm. trauma comes trauma that you haven't dealt with mm. faces you head on. faces you because children are like mirrors for things we haven't dealt with right. and they trigger us yes. and we get angry at them mm. and we now that's when we, we yell snap. so you know and when mm. we snap at children we are like oh i had planned not to snap mm. but it's because they've triggered something in you you see mm. them struggling with bullying in yeah. class five yeah. and you are bullied when you're in class five and you never money uh, you never process it yeah. that's when it shows up wow. so that's mostly for those who have kids for those who don't it will be in relationships mm -hmm. okay and i know this is a space we talk about relationships yes, yes. any and parenting and, also and parenting. i'm a parent oh, oh mm. okay yes. so you're sucking this in <laughs> yes, yes very much <laughs> <laughs> how old is your child I'm the seven. <laughs> seven 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 okay mm. all right okay boy or girl okay all right happy parenting thank you <laughs> <laughs> i am writing notes <laughs> oh please do yeah so okay where was was, uh, about I, I'm, I'm actually going to use this as an opportunity to take a quick okay. break and then we can chime back into <laughs> right, it because yeah, cool. I, I know everyone's listening intently okay. so we want to continue this conversation if you are just joining us we are the adults in the room and i said to you we had a surprise for you and i was not joking we have dr carol chakua in the building who's here to talk to us about overcoming childhood trauma and i like that she started with this idea of childhood trauma a lot of the times if you're a parent can actually uh, come from a place of your own experience so there's actually a cause and effect to these things and we're going to sink our teeth more into this conversation as soon as we get back from this short break we are the adults in the room keeping things up and we're keeping things fresh we have dr carol chakua in the building who's here to talk to us about childhood trauma how to overcome it as an adult and i like that we've started today's conversation off with this idea of before you can start looking at childhood trauma you have to now assess your own experience as a parent and the things that you went through so before right. we went on this break we started off by actually defining uh what childhood trauma was but then Karigo had a follow-up question that would now segue into yeah. into now breaking down trauma yeah mm. so what are the few common warning signs of someone is living with trauma yeah because i know there are a few people who are like i me, I don't have trauma. I'm okay. I'm perfect. Mm. But maybe somebody has told them, mm, how was your upbringing like? You know, I hear people asking such questions mm. all the time, try to navigate and understand somebody. Mm. But what are the few 
common layman warning signs. Okay. Anybody would hear and feel and understand, okay, maybe she's talking about me. Okay. Okay. Mostly you'll see it it shows up in relationships. Okay. 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 So, uh, like I said, with kids, they become a mirror. They show you this is what you need to deal with. Yeah. Uh, with other, in other spaces, it will be, uh, you know, you, you, you're in a relationship. Someone says something so simple, but it triggers so much anger or tears or, mm. you know, so much emotion. When, when you just find that you are struggling in your relationship in a way that is extreme, it's time to begin to, I like to use the word, to look under the bonnet, mm -hmm. the mm. bonnet and check and see what is really What's going, going on. on. So mostly it's uh, in, in relationships you get triggered. It's in the choice of uh, people that we relate with. You find yourself stuck on a certain kind, for example, for a lady, a certain kind of man who... Mm -hmm you know it's a toxic relationship it's toxic but you still get stuck you just still follow the same because that's what's familiar for you wow. you know so you go for what's familiar mm -hmm. at your place of work you could be having maybe um problems also at your place of work maybe mm. uh, uh 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 you 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 experience a boss who reminds you of a relationship with your mom mm. okay so you have issues with authority figures, maybe female authority figures, male authority figures. So it's such a whole wide range of issues. But when you, when you find yourself really, really stuck in relationships, at work, but also um, what happens is because we can't deal and trauma needs to be processed mm -hmm. one way or another, mm -hmm. you find yourselves in addiction, alcohol, mm. drugs, mm -hmm. workaholic, uh, mm. addicted to sex, mm. you know, pornography. Mm. So, okay. Oh, Again, addictions could also be a sign of past trauma. Yeah. Sometimes it will show up in actual mental illnesses, uh, panic attacks, mm. depression, anxiety. Wow. So you see how much that is of a wide range. I think the best thing is just check yourself, yeah. see if something is repeated mm. uh, in your relationship, see if it's something that is causing you to get stuck. Yeah. However much you try, you decide... Um, not gonna drink anymore but then something triggers you and you find yourself spiraling yeah. mm. so we just need to check ourselves continuously and find out are the spaces i mean is it an, a repeated issue mm. um am yeah. i is it getting in the way of my everyday everyday uh, life experiences uh -huh. yeah and what if it's something that you've just given an example i found that maybe i have a lot of anxiety or i have a, sp a spas of attacks emotional attacks mm -hmm. to my children mm -hmm. or i have authority uh, authority figure problems and i have discovered one way or another that this is happening to me mm -hmm. how can i get from understanding and healing uh, myself mm -hmm. or do i need to get a therapist you know, um, many times if the trauma was moderate to severe, you will need support. Yes. Yes. A structured kind of support. Yeah. And sometimes it will be a support group. Yeah. Okay, not necessarily a uh, professional. Mm. But most of the time you actually do need a professional. And we need to normalize seeking therapy. Yes. Right. We really do need to normalize that. Just the same way we've normalized. You have a flu you go, go see the hospital. doctor yeah mm. so we really need to normalize that space there should be more opportunities it should be made cheaper it should be made accessible all those things need to happen because we do need i just say everybody needs to go through some kind of therapy one way or another mm -hmm. to just help you even just understand yourself better figure mm. yourself out not necessarily because there's something fundamentally mm. wrong with you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yes you may need that but look just the m most difficult part when it comes to dealing with trauma is acknowledging mm -hmm. that something happened. Mm -hmm. right. Acknowledging that whatever happened was traumatizing. Mm -hmm. Because I have people in sessions, uh, I have clients in sessions who don't want to go there. Yeah. Especially if it's a parent, mm. a mom or a dad. They're like, I can't. I, wow. I, ca I can't. I mean, they... they, they they're such wonderful parents. I have a good relationship with, there's so much denial, mm -hmm. okay? So just getting someone to acknowledge that harm was done to me, yes. wrong was done to me. Mm -hmm. Let's put aside the person who harmed you mm. because that is someone you, you have a complicated mm -hmm. relationship with. Mm. And especially as adults, there's just a way that when, when we grow up, 
for many of us, we start um, bonding better with our parents yeah. than it was before. Mm. Yes, for some, not That's for everybody. Yeah. Mm. So you don't want to go there. As Africans, you know, you don't talk negatively about your parents. And especially if that person is no longer alive. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's not a subject. Not, yeah. it, you do not even go there. Yeah. You're denying yourself an opportunity to heal because mm. acknowledgement is the most important part in this whole process of mm. healing from trauma. Yeah. And even myself, with all the skills and all the sessions we have, if you don't get to a place of acknowledgement that wrong was done, harm was done, let's separate. You know, my parents did what they did with the skills they had or did not have, mm -hmm. okay? In, my, in, in their position, I probably could have done the same thing. Yeah. So can we accept, first of all, that we bless them for who they are and be okay with where they are? That's another journey. Yeah. Mm. But let's acknowledge that what happened to you should not have happened. Yeah. It would, was wrong. Would we say most of the, st uh, the reason why we are adults go into a state of denial is more because of how we were socialized? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's one That's one big reason we were socialized. Of course, we were socialized to respect them a certain yeah. way and to put them at a certain place. And so not to also believe that uh, traumas exist. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. You know, these are Wazungu things. Yes. Yeah. 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 We say that. We say yeah. that. Yeah. It's unfortunate because feelings are feelings. That's how we are made. We're made human, yeah. mm. fundamentally, mm. wherever part of the world you come from. Yeah. And what confuses this whole space is that people respond to trauma differently. Mm. Mm. And so there's always that comparison of, but this one is doing well. Right. So what is your problem? Right. Why are you sitting here still? So there's all this uh, talk where we tell people, we, 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 something has happened in a community and we come in when we are talking and we say, let's just forget mm. the past. Mm. You know, in Kiswahili, your mambo ilifali. It's important that you acknowledge mm -hmm. and you actually say, this is what happened to me. And that yeah. can only happen. That's why therapy is important. It can only happen in a safe environment because sometimes you open that Pandora's box, then everything pours out. Mm. And if you don't have the capacity to handle it as a professional, yeah, then it gets worse. You, you're doing more harm than good. Right, yeah. right. I can definitely see the value in that. I'm a big believer in therapy. Uh, I spent quite a bit of my life overseas. I grew up in Australia. And I know there, the, you're right in saying that accessibility is a big thing yeah. because they understand that how they understand how vital it is to mm. have time to actually go through and, and heal and and acknowledge the things that have happened to you in the past even right. if it's maybe not a specific situation or right. circumstance yeah. just looking at your your mm. upbringing the people that were in your life that were instrumental okay. is incredibly vital and i'm excited to, to continue this conversation with you here in the building if you are just joining us we are the adults in the room and we have a special guest in the building today dr carol chakua who's here to talk to us about overcoming childhood trauma and the connection that it often has with our own upbringing i hope you are learning something and like i said i hope you have your pens and your pencils ready to take these notes because it is a show of value today do not go anywhere because we've got more of the conversation coming up we have a very honorable guest in the building dr carol chakua who's here to talk to us about overcoming childhood trauma in adulthood and uh, like i said we've been talking about this uh very openly and very honestly so i hope that you are also ready to have an honest conversation with yourself as we go through today's interview yeah. Kariga, i know you said you had a question yeah. for yeah, so I, I want to know, you know, sometimes you're having conversations with adults in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and you're like, tell me about your childhood. And they always say, I don't want to talk about it. Bad memories, bad memories. Yeah. Is this a sign of <clears throat> trauma? And how can one unpack this? Yeah. How can one really come to terms? Because there are some people who just don't want to do therapy. Mm. They don't want to talk about it with their family. But is there a way for them to unpack this? And first and foremost, is it childhood trauma? Are bad memories, only memories you remember, bad memories, a part of childhood trauma? I think it just depends on what, you, what really stood out for you. Yeah. When, because we have good and bad memories mm. yeah. as we grow. And again, because of people are different their brains choose to focus on whatever works for them then. Mm. So if you find someone who is like, I don't want to go there, it's really a sure sign that they need to go there. Mm. Like, I really don't think there's any other way around it. 
and that's the hardest part because it's like there was a wound it was deep mm. then there was a scab that went on top mm. and the so wound you covered the wound yes mm. yes you covered the wound and it's rotting mm. okay and the reality with traumas yeah. is that you have to remove that cascade and go in there so it's a messy process mm. yeah that's why it really has to be done in a safe environment mm-hmm. in a structured environment mm-hmm. it's a messy process mm. yeah and so for someone like that really is just to really encourage them mm. because number one, they haven't acknowledged and it's important that we acknowledge mm. number two, i think where you can really get them is to ask is your life working well for you is how you're living your life now working out for you mm-hmm. okay how how much motivation do you have to change yeah okay i get that's how i i mean when it comes to working with parents you really get them there like mm. do you want your relationship with your child to get better yeah. you know with a spouse a boyfriend a girlfriend you can drop yes. you know mm. like when you really pushed you're like okay i don't have to do this mm. a job you can always leave it mm. or just really figure out other ways of dealing with it but when it comes to a child there's just that thing of i want better for them and mm. they begin to realize that if i don't fix it i'm going to recycle it I, i'm passing down what i got and mm. i keep getting so i think the thing is to really let them know that r- there's really no other way around it like mm. especially when someone is completely just does not want to go there then they need to go there yeah. okay in and it's of, not an easy process yeah in the case of parenting that you've mentioned and you realize that we have a, a parent maybe who's gone through trauma you said most of the time parents project mm. uh, what has happened to them in the past to their children and we assume that hey this child is that so if we're going to take that scenario that for example i as a parent i'm projecting to my child karigo for god knows what i am and you have highlighted that problem to me mm. now when we are going through this therapy does my child also have to be part of this therapy or i will go alone most of the time no i mean i people work differently mm-hmm. you know we have family therapists who want to work with the entire system i work very differently because i have worked with families way before I started working with parents mm. yes. and for me consistently I have seen if I support the parent then I just be ab- I give them the skills that they need to process themselves mm-hmm. and then also give them the skills they need to support their children then they are good to go mm-hmm. right. so people work differently but mm-hmm. for me what I have chosen very deliberately is to work with the parent only I have a really good network of child psychologists um, that I work with and I I I I refer, refer. yeah mm. I refer yes mm, I see so I I guess just going back to something you said earlier where when you when you when you're having a session with a client and they they're reluctant to go into their past a lot of the time people can say oh you know the past is a long time ago it right. does it doesn't matter right. how do you then connect the root cause of maybe what they're dealing with in the present to something that happened in the past how yeah. does that process happen because i know obviously you go through a whole methodology to actually get to the point where this is the reason why this is happening but how does that how does that process actually happen it's such a back and forth thing and i i i wouldn't give like step 1 step 2 mm-hmm. step 3 mm-hmm. it's again for me it's really just helping someone realize make that connection between what's going on with me now and something mm-hmm. that happened in the past. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you, we of course we use we use different uh methods, you know, sometimes you just tell someone to write about their childhood or to talk about their childhood. Mm. And as you they're talking about it and maybe maybe they wrote about it and they're reading it out to you, you as a therapist you're able to pick out those connections. I so see. you point them out. Mm. You are able to point them out. And it's usually such a hard moments, mm. you know, for them they're like, "Oh my god. Oh my god." Yeah. No, 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 you know, and they want to run, you know. Wow. But the reality <sighs> is that there is those connections are there. Yeah. And it takes a really safe environment for you to be able to help them. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, there's a listener who grew up watching their parents fight. And this is something in society we do not like to talk about mm. as adults, mm. as grown adults with kids. Yeah. How do you manage this trauma as an adult without feeling silly? 
you've seen your parents fighting mm-hmm. it's been traumatizing you now you're a full grown adult you have kids but you can't shake off your parents fighting when you are a kid mm-hmm. number 1 is it a traumatic experience and number 2 if it is how do you manage this if it was distressing without feeling silly i am wondering what what i'm wondering about that silly without without, yeah. without feeling you know uncomfortable silly in in the context of i'm an adult i'm an adult i should have already gotten over this by now yeah. mm. silly in that context yeah and that's that's basically a, a really messed up twisted belief system about feelings mm. yeah that adults are prone to certain feelings and children are prone to certain feelings feelings are feelings yeah. right. they're neither good they're neither bad in fact yeah. they're neither good or bad and you know we label them as good or bad yeah. you know but they're neither good or bad and how do you process again it's really acknowledging mm. that one it happened but two it has affected me a certain way we need to really look at how is it affecting me now in the present mm. and that sometimes becomes such a source of motivation to just it's it's messing up my relationships i'm spending too much time on my whatever addiction i have mm-hmm. or too much money on it okay so when they are able to see that so for that parent for that uh, parent or adult really again acknowledge mm. you know know that feelings are feelings this is how it has affected me i uh, am afraid of confrontation me mm. when i see confrontation i mm. right. so that means that you cannot speak up at your place of work for example mm-hmm. okay it means like that like you become a doormat yeah. you know people just step on you you just can't because that was just too much uh turmoil for you mm. okay so it's again just getting back to how is it affecting me and do i Am I motivated enough mm. to want to change this situation? Mm. Right, right. Whatever I found out that, yes, uh, my past traumas, whether it's coming from the example she, she's given where I had abusive parents or I went through something in my childhood or in my high school that or maybe someone was molested, that, of course, I dim- d- dismissed it. Then I grew up and my life, in, in my head or in my place, I'm thinking, I've got it all together. Yeah. Things are okay. But later on, it comes creeping up slowly by slowly. How would you help someone like that? Because majority of us, uh, as she was talking, it reminded me of someone I know. A friend of mine, I did not know actually, but she had been, uh, what was, she had been uh, raped like severally. She was raped by the uncle when the father passed away. Then after that, when she tried telling her mother, her mother dismissed the whole story. Like, this is your uncle. Who is helping us wow. so are you trying to say that he did this do you know you will not be taken to school your brothers will not be taken to school fast forward the mother passed away and she had to run away from that house mm-hmm. she went and became a house help after becoming a house help uh this particular lady just was also molested by the man of the house because she's still a young person so she ran away from it it was a series of different things and later on she got married she became a doctor, uh, actually a pediatrician. And we only came to find out later because the, the husband works uh, 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 from a different country and would come. And every other time the husband would come in the country, this lady would run away. And I used to wonder, how would you run away? And she would tell me she does not know how to be intimate with the pastor. Yeah. And it took a while for us, like now to, uh, the way you're talking about support system and she opened up and now she has things that she talks about publicly. It's also online. Right. But for such a person, how she managed to open up? And there are many people who carry this past traumas and they never know how to speed and they live like normal human beings how best would someone uh, with such a trauma or anything that is related to it just decide to come up and try and help themselves you know what it's not easy mm. you don't make that decision it's events that trigger you to make that decision okay. for example mm. yeah having that issue with intimacy yeah because mm. she was constantly getting into the in. way of their relationship mm. yes so it will catch up with you sooner or later so yeah, you cannot will, run. yeah there's nothing like i turned out okay when it comes to trauma or i healed them or now I healed, some, yes, someone else yes yes no mm. and even for people who go through therapy coaching whatever it is they go through they need to open up themselves to the space of this is an ongoing process that will go on and mm. I have to be patient with myself. I have to be compassionate to myself because there's no instant healing. Mm. And there is, sometimes I say there's no 100% complete healing mm-hmm. because you're 
always working on yourself. You're always improving yourself. And we all are. There's no one who has ever arrived. Even if you had a perfect childhood, mm. you still have issues that you deal with. Mm -hmm. So how much more someone who has gone through trauma? Mm. So we need to be open up to that fact that, you know, mm. uh, it's a process. Yes, it definitely is a process. And I like that we're getting into this because I think when we come back from this break, I have a follow up question on that that I'd love to ask you. Okay. If you are just joining us, we are the adults in the room and we have Dr. Carol Chakua in the building who's talking to us about the importance of not just therapy, but the importance of overcoming childhood trauma in a adulthood and how some of the experiences that we had growing up now manifest themselves in our day-to-day -day lives. And I hope you are paying attention and I hope that you are attentive to what she's saying because there is a lot of value in today's conversation. We are the adults in the room and we shall be right back. Dr. Carol Chakua, who is a psychologist and specializes in, uh, in parenting, more specifically helping parents understand how they can form healthier relationships with their children. And uh, I like how she said a lot of the time these conversations tend to take a bit of a left turn because the beginning of this process is asking the parents, tell me about your childhood. Mm. And I can imagine a lot of parents being like, we're not here to talk about my childhood. Yeah. We're here to, I need you to help me deal with this child of mine. Hey Arnold is just naughty. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you yeah. see. Yeah. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad that we're having this conversation because I, as I said earlier, I think this is a conversation that is very vital, especially for us in this society. Uh, I, you said something earlier about as Africans, we don't want to talk ill about not just our experiences, but our families. Um, particularly in situations where they, they have passed. Yeah. Now, the question that I have uh, for you is, are there certain examples of how certain experiences in our childhood manifest in adulthood? And I know Barbara gave a very specific example. And as she was telling that story, you can sort of see the linkages between experiences that we've had and how this now manifests in adulthood. But are there more, I guess, subtle ones that a lot of people don't think about? Oh, this is the reason. Maybe I just wasn't, uh, I didn't receive enough attention or things like that, that people may not consider as being a cause of any trauma. Yeah, and I think it's still back to, can you speak up for yourself? Mm. If you find that you cannot speak up for yourself, then maybe you were not given an opportunity or maybe you went through some trauma and you're told, shush, you know, mm -hmm. don't ever say, you know, here we don't talk about mm -hmm. things like that. So there are many things, yes. So there, 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 there's many ways you can trace your childhood um, experiences to who you are. Uh, if you experience aggression, you become aggressive, you know, I see. you know, uh, when, mm. when, 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 when you're trying to express yourself, uh, sometimes you get into that warrior victim mentality as well. So it will manifest differently again for different people. But when you are seeing later on in life, like I said again earlier, addictions, mm -hmm. okay, uh, drink too much, uh, or use work, becoming a workaholic mm -hmm. or jumping from one relationship to another all those are indications that there's something that need, there's some unfinished business mm -hmm. that we need to finish we need to complete because we expect life to go a certain way okay like i said we're pleasure seeking mm -hmm. and so we expect life to go smooth when it doesn't then we ex there's some brokenness or some pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that we need to look out for. Yes. Right. We, we, I mean, that, that disappeared. Yeah. And so anything that's familiar, we want to grab onto it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We want to grab onto it and see, is it going to fit in this un unfinished business, in this unfinished uh, pieces of puzzle? Mm -hmm. So it will manifest in all those behaviors. I see. Addiction, aggression, issues with relationships. Yeah. yeah. Bullying. Let's talk about bullying. Mm -hmm. It's a traumatic experience. Yes. How does an adult, uh, an adult, let me rephrase this well. And what are, I want you to paint for me a picture of an adult that was bullied when they were a child. And they've not dealt with it. They don't even know it. And I look at this adult and I'm like, this is a bully. They are 50, 60, 35, 30, 20s, 28. And in my opinion, they show the signs and the symptoms of a bully. Was this person probably bullied when they were a child? And what does, a, what does an adult who was bullied as a child look like? Two ways. Yes. You know, you can go the not doing anything, being the doormat, because I don't want to ruffle feathers, because it caused me so much pain when I tried to speak up. And so they become... Passive, mm. just passive or passive aggressive. So there's passive, then there's 
aggressive, mm. outrightly, you know, loud, stepping on people, you know, in a meeting, you're talking over people, you mm -hmm. know, it comes in how you express yourself, your emails, like mm. all forms of communication is just aggressive. And sometimes that aggression can be physical. Mm. But then there's passive aggressive where you're like, um, I am not going to say anything, but they will just know I am here. <laughs> mm, they will feel wow. the presence. They will feel me. They yes. will know I'm, <laughs> I'm around. That is the hardest one to deal with. Right. So see, again, it will manifest differently. But what we need to understand is that even for th that person who is showing us a, a, up as a bully and the one who is showing up as passive or passive aggressive, what's underlying is pain. Mm. Okay. Yes. And it's pain that we need to help them process. It's easier to deal with someone who is acting oh, yeah, and poor me and being victimized. We rescue them. And I even and, crying. and, and mm. I even tell I, I even tell parents, even the child who is helpless and showing helplessness and oh, yeah, that's misbehavior. Because mm -hmm. I look at misbehavior that's differently. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. look at misbehavior as bad manners, you know. Mm -hmm. Behavior that's out of norm. So even that one who is seeking attention, the one who's forever being picked on and, and coming to say, teacher, Kind this one did this, or mm -hmm. mommy this, or daddy, that is also misbehavior. Mm -hmm. Underlying all those behaviors is an unmet need. Mm -hmm. It's pain. And we need to also be more, um, what's the word, mm -hmm. compassionate uh -huh. and empathetic to everyone that's very hard mm -hmm. yeah. especially when someone is being aggressive mm -hmm. okay we need to just begin to understand that every behavior has an underlying need and that underlying need is unconscious it's not conscious it's, mm -hmm. it's, they say when we behave a certain way we are communicating a mm -hmm. need and many people say just stop communicating then just deal with it mm -hmm. it's unconscious it shows up yes. wow okay it yeah. shows up so we need again as a society my goodness mm -hmm. we need to really develop the skill of empathy mm. and compassion. Mm. We don't have that. Mm. Right. And we need to start it for ourselves first, mm. actually. Mm. Mm. Okay. With the struggles that we are having, let's be compassionate. Mm. Let's know that it's not easy to, to, to be in the space you're in. When you have failed, when you have uh, tried to, to not yell at your child mm. and then you explode on them, Give yourself compassion. Mm. I see. You know, mm. when you have in a relationship and you burst on someone and you explode on them, first of all, give yourself compassion. It's coming from somewhere. Right. Mm. Give yourself kindness. First start healing that first before even we start looking at others. And it becomes very easy to be compassionate to, to other people if we learn to practice it mm. on ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Would you see we are in a society where, and forgive me for using this word, that sometimes we are overly sensitive. And the reason I'm saying that I have a child who is really, what, presses my buttons and is teaching me how to be sensitive because the moments I would say something, then she tells me, Mama, you hurt my feelings. And I'm thinking like, really? Mm. <laughs> then I, but of course, that's in my head. Yeah, I, I'm learning not to say like, Really, my mom would have slapped you right yeah. now. But now, because I, I, like, there's a time I told her, Mama, you sleep like an octopus. Like, because she really does not have yeah, a lot of sleep. Mm. She sleeps like a clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She really wanted to sleep. I told her, Mama, you sleep like an octopus. And I just want my space today. Then she came back and told me, Mommy, you hurt my feelings. I'm thinking like, really? I, mm. But you sleep like... So I had to take that back in. Yeah. And even as I talk to friends, I realized that many of us, I don't know if it's the age or what, how they are taught than how we were socialized. Mm. Children today are very in touch with their feelings. They are. So sometimes they find you not empathetic yeah. enough mm. to their needs. Yeah. Now, would I equate that to my past traumas that maybe I don't know I have? Because I, I, don't, I don't think she has, but maybe I could have. Because sometimes I'm thinking like, sweetie, you're so sensitive. Yeah. Mm. But I cannot tell her yeah. that. Yeah. So do I have past traumas, for example, a parent like me? <laughs> can we move aside I'll send you the check yes. yes the thing is we we can't know until we open up ourselves up to that space okay. yeah. but let me talk about that wondering if our children are too sensitive I don't know you know what happens is you grow up being told to suppress your feelings. Yeah. You're chapwad, then you're told, do not 
even yes Una open yes. your mouth yes, yes. Then you are bitter and you ask, "Kwa nini yoni?" That was my mother. Like either way, <laughs> yes. right? You it's still mean, wrong. You, yeah, it's still wrong. But most of the time, it was your chapot. They inflict pain, mm. but you're told, "Do not utter." Yes. You know, because again, because how have we been raised? Expressing feelings is manipulation. Mm-hmm. Is looking for attention. So, most of the time, when you find yourself telling someone they are being too sensitive mm-hmm. it's because you are unable to deal with their emotions i okay. see you're having a mm-hmm. problem because you also do not know how to handle big emotions mm-hmm. okay so i don't want to just tie it to trauma but you know again we know we have to be careful not to call everything trauma yes, yes. okay we yeah, actually that's what i was yeah. asking <laughs> yeah. the question we, we can't call everything trauma but i want you to just hold that thought okay, because we right. need to go on a small break okay. yes. just a small one because you need to continue with what you're yes. saying yes, yes and i'm so excited to actually get into this because I, I you've painted a particular example that i have also been in growing up mm-hmm. and i'm curious to hear your response to this if you are just joining us we're going to be officially opening up the lines as soon as we hit top of the hour which means if you have questions or thoughts or ideas that you would like to ask our esteemed guest this is the time to do it. 0719-012600 is the number to call. And as soon as we get back from this short break, we're going to be continuing the conversation. We are the adults in the room. Ladies and gentlemen, it is exactly 9 p.m. on the 28th of September. I hope you all well. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not just going to call you ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call you students because I am also a student and I am learning, taking a lot of value from our esteemed guest today. We have Dr. Carol Chakua in the building talking to us and really demystifying some of the ideas that we have around not just therapy, but also uh, childhood trauma, how to overcome it and how it actually manifests. Now, I know we are, we are opening up the lines as soon as we hit, uh, in fact, it's even top of the hour now so let me not say we are opening up the lines but can they she are now officially the open first. yes but before we actually start taking your calls i'd like to get back into this conversation because it was heading in a very interesting direction uh, before we went to break i was talking about if either we have misconceptions of trauma or we in a society where our children are just very sensitive and i know it's a very bad word to say yeah. someone will be like what's wrong with this woman yeah. <laughs> but there are, there are moments like i when i talk to my friends and my peers they're like my child told me this so we're always processing and they are always they, they are so in touch with their feelings that I do not think I was in touch with my feelings at that particular age the way she is. Mm. Of course you were not. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's it's again upbringing. And and you know we like I said we don't want to label everything as trauma. Right. Yeah. Okay, we have no more childhood experiences, you know, uh, you know, someone yelled at you, someone chappered you, mm. you know, I think that the, the, the thing here is, like I've said before, it's how we interpret it, how we respond to it. And that depends on different people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So for you, if it was distressing, then it's traumatizing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. If you didn't have the resources and capacities to process it and bounce back, back to normal, mm. then it was traumatizing ah. for you. And then it calls for you to pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. But the question of, Are we raising children who are too sensitive? Uh, No, I don't think so. I think we are the ones who are uncomfortable with big emotions because we were not raised to to, 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 to handle them, to be open about them, to express them Mm -hmm. and to articulate them. And we are at sea. We don't know what to do because, I mean, you know, the simple act of just naming a feeling as I'm angry. Or I'm frustrated mm. actually does something to the brain. That's oh, why yeah. she once told me I'm overreacting. Okay, then later on I was like, okay, yeah, that one I overreacted. <laughs> but you know, for a child to tell yeah. you that, I was yeah. like, they are so in touch with their feelings mm. than the way I was in touch with my feelings at that age. Mm. I couldn't even tell my mom I'm overreacting. How? Of course. Am I crazy? Yeah. I would be hanged somewhere. Yeah. 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 But they they're very in touch that. I, as you were talking, I'm asking myself, do I have a past trauma mm. that I'm, or am I blocking something? But you're right to say that mm. not everything is as it seems. Yeah. Maybe we need to open up ourselves to our emotions. Yeah, yeah. and you know, it, it's scary when we call it trauma. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to tone it down a notch yes. and still say, we've had experiences that were negative that yeah. we need to process. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. so that because I know it can be very daunting yeah. to just look at it as trauma. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then because now trauma just, um, it just looks like this really big thing that yeah. has really destroyed you and you're damaged. Yeah. Yeah. So let's open ourselves up to knowing that there are some certain experiences that may not have been 
cannot be categorized as, as trauma, trauma. Mm -hmm. but we still need to process them. I see. Where I was I allowed to to talk about my feelings? I wasn't. But the beauty of it is that even as an adult, we have opportunities to to That's process it. those mm. things. Mm. Okay, we have opportunities. If I wasn't uh, allowed to express my feelings, I have an opportunity to. Uh, the word that is being used a lot now is to reparent yourself. Oh, so okay. you give yourself what wow. you didn't get. I see. Okay, you allow yourself so self care. Mm. Can I buy you myself gifts. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, just don't overdo it. Yes. Because it wow. could also too much of that could yes. also be a sign of trauma. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're missing you know, out on something. You're, you're missing out of, on mm. something. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we, ca we can give ourselves opportunities to do that. And there's a beautiful phrase that I like. You say, as much as we say that brain, uh, trauma changes the brain, yeah. mm -hmm. healing changes the brain too. Wow. Yes. So we open ourselves up to that space mm -hmm. yeah, for healing. Yeah. I see. I so see. what I want to know is this, because we don't want to label everything as trauma. Mm. Is it possible for unresolved experiences mm -hmm. or unresolved trauma mm -hmm. to be passed from parent to child? And uh, how does, just give us a very basic example. Okay. Paint us a picture. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Bullying. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. So you're, you are, you're a girl, you were in class five, ten years, and you belonged to this really cool crowd. Oh my God. And then one day you came and everyone is in one corner and they're not talking to you yeah. and they're looking at you and whispering and then they burst out laughing mm. and kidogo you hear two rumors here and there they say Sijui, you were found Sijui, in which corner or you are kissing somebody i mean they just actually make yeah. up stuff mm -hmm. yeah and that becomes such a source of Mm. You go home and there's just too much going on, you know. There's even no one to talk to. Mm -hmm. And maybe you don't talk to or, or you try to talk about it and you're told, you're kawaida, you know, that's life. Mm. You know, just get over it. Fight mm. for yourself. Fight for yourself. Fight yes. So you didn't get support. So you bury that and you move on. Mm. Okay. Then you have your own child. And for me, I'll talk about the parenting example anyway that's what you ask yes, is it possible yes, to pass it down yes your child in class five six your daughter comes home and says mommy you know anita today and their friends they say this and that and and then she is bowling mm. and something in you that's just triggers God. the mama bear so two ways one, you can decide to get into that car and go to school. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And some parents actually go to mm -hmm. face the actual little 10 year old Anita. I know. I've seen that. I've seen that. But what's driving you <laughs> yeah. at that point is the need to fix that which wasn't fixed from your own experience. From your own experiences. Are you hearing? Mm. Are you hearing? Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. Or the other way you can, I mean, there's many ways you can do it. The but other way is only natural. <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. This it is, is mama natural. Bear. It is natural. It is very natural. You pick on my child. I mean, I'm, I'm coming at you. In the morning, I will wait for you dropping your child. <laughs> I'm like, Dr. Carol, <laughs> your daughter, Karigo, uh -huh. mm. you need to tell her to stop. Eh? <laughs> that That's is, my baby. That is now the one they say it ends in prime tears. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it becomes an issue now between the parents. parents yeah. Yeah, I get up. How yeah. do you even attack my child? Right. And then of course... <laughs> <laughs> but they know schools, and that's why you yes. know schools have to have really clear policies yes, when it comes do, to yeah. bullying, and, and they do that. But mm. I completely hear yes, you. Yeah, like, it's only it's natural. A, like, yeah, but the other way is you get have so pinched someone who's pinched my daughter, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even embarrassed. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not not embarrassed. <laughs> no, I am not embarrassed. <laughs> and I had someone pinching my daughter. Doesn't my daughter is so polite. <laughs> She has the politeness of the father. So you went and pinched her. No, so I, for example, <laughs> your child, your child Carol has been pinching. And we are seated here together. And I was seeing my child being pinched. Can we go, you're seeing your child pinching my child. 
I'm like, okay, this lady is not going to do anything. <laughs> mm. Okay. I'm like, and my daughter is upset. She's crying. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, please just stop, Carol. Don't pinch. Then this boy pinched again my child. <laughs> I pinched him in front of the mother. Okay. I didn't spray it. Okay. Mm. And I told my friend, you've seen your child doing that three times and you're not. I pinched that child. I told her, try it. Now I will beat you. Mm. Which I know is not nice, but hey. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm mama bear. Who diagnosed this one? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You've given us context. Yes. You've given us context. Yes. Yes. Given yes. Us context. The context. parent was yes. there. So I'm like, <laughs> the parent wasn't doing anything. Because I have been bullied before and I was like, maybe she cannot pre uh, project us. My, sister, mm. my daughter sometimes has that uh, year factor. She's so nice. I'm like, you need to toughen up. But mm. she can't be me. I understand that. So I will protect her. Till the day she'll protect herself. Mm. When, is, when will that be? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, doctor, do your job. <laughs> doctor, that <laughs> child will not <laughs> pick <laughs> my child <laughs> and I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my doctor, goodness. Doctor, we thank God you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what, what she's saying is very real it's because true, even. It's yeah, real. Even in the it's parks, real. We yeah. see it in the play parks. Yeah. 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 And some people feel so bad. They're like, and you see women sing. I'm so upset. You're like, Karigo's child was pinching uh, and the mom never did anything. Yeah. Me, I'll do something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Call, maybe I have a past trauma. I don't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not, not, not going to label that. Yes, I mean, that experience. Yeah. But I get oh that. God. But how how would you want someone, because these are things that happen. Yeah. I've seen it when maybe you go, you're doing a brunch with friends, uh, you're in church or in the playground and you see someone else's child hurting your child. Are you just supposed to let it go? You know, right now, there's so much about child abuse mm. and getting into other children's spaces. Yes, yeah, I've heard about so that. So you have to be careful, mm. like for real. Yes. I mean, I think there was context there. The mom was there. You were looking at the mom like, hello, do something. Mm. I don't know if you had a relationship yes. with the mom. Yeah. She's an in-law. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm pinching this one. That's, 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 I'm like, I'm pinching this that's one. That's even giving us better context. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Man, I'm pinching. <laughs> well, you're very good at your job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, this is time is not seeing this. What am I though? You are I'm like, what is teach your child a lesson? Yeah. So again, you see how mm -hmm. there's no perfect way, ideal way of of reacting to stuff. I mean, That's true. this is mm -hmm. family. This is an in-law. You probably you malizana somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, I still got into trouble old, for it, but I didn't exactly. care. Exactly. <laughs> this is my child. Old guard grudges for a while. Yes. But look, if it's an absolute stranger, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Mm. Someone will even just take you to court. Yeah, it will be a different court. It will be a court, yeah. completely different. Case. Yeah. So mm. again, different uh, situations. Mm. Okay. So my, my question to you just, uh, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about this idea because you've spoken about uh, we tend to project maybe certain experiences that we had or they tend to manifest themselves in certain ways in our life. Uh, as a potential parent, I hope to ha have a family one day and mm -hmm. to be able to raise my kids. And my, I think about this a lot. I'm always like, I want to raise my kids in a way that gives them, uh, lets them know that they're loved, but also lets them know that uh, in this life you have to work and you have yeah. to make a life for yourself. So how do we, I guess, balance, just going back to what Barbara was saying, this idea of children being more expressive and more, uh, willing to say talk about their feelings what what actually where was the shift because if i think back to my upbringing one of the things that i heard a lot is that uh my mom said that was always very very expressive uh but i'm curious to know what what is it that happened that maybe we didn't get as children that has given our children the confidence to actually say their mind and talk about their feelings where was that that shift I think it's generally as a society, mm. we are, are more expressive. Of course, we are more democratic. Our children watch a lot of these things online, uh, Netflix or wherever, mm. and they see kids expressing ah, themselves. So that's how, that, how they learn. We probably didn't like the way we were brought up, so we are allowing our children to express themselves more. Yeah. Mm. Now, the problem is that sometimes we go to the extreme yes. okay mm. and that's where now we need to be able to heal so that we do it from a place of objectivity mm -hmm. and we're not being led from a place of just making up for what you didn't have right. so th that shift has happened because we are sh changing as a society mm -hmm. our children are going to montessori schools to schools where they are it's all about play mm. you I see. know uh, and even just your regular school you mm. know they still the, the openness it's there 
But the problem, actually, which for me is such a concern, is that that's not how we were raised. Mm. We don't know how to handle these kids, even our own kids. That's we true. don't know how to handle their openness and their expressiveness. Yeah. And that's why we really do need to get skills so that we don't go to either extremes, mm. so that we are able to be firm. You know, you, you want to show your child they are loved, but you still want to be able to give limits in a way that is calm, in a way that you do it with authority, without yelling mm. and, and over repeating yourself or yes. losing it, mm. you know. So that, and I say there's never a balance, there's a shift. Mm. You shift from one end to the other and you keep going back and forth until you find your groove yeah. and your groove will be different for different situations, mm -hmm. okay. It depends on your values also. There are some mm. people an absolute, there is no way you will go to bed without showering. Mm -hmm. and there's another one who will be like, shower? What? Mm. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my yeah. child is happy. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, so also your values <laughs> come mm. in. You know, oh, your values so. come in. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine a child. <laughs> You'll show in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Tari, is, is rejection a traumatic experience? Or is it just an experience? Is I rejection trauma? Wait, before you answer that, I'll give you a, I'll give you a second to think about it. <laughs> you know, let it let it simmer. Yeah. As soon as we get back from this short break, I would love to hear your answer on that. And of course, I will con I will uh, now start taking your calls. I see all the callers coming in. I thank you so much for all of your you know your your willingness to want to ask questions, and I'm excited to get into it. We are the adults in the room. Do not go anywhere. Are just joining us. We are the adults in the room. They should come to Kenya. <laughs> I know, I know. We are the adults in the room, and we have a very special guest in the building, Dr. Carol Chakua, who's here to talk to us about overcoming trauma. And I want to hear and sample some of your views. But before we do that, you had asked a, a question yes. to the doctor, and I would love to get her response. Yes. Is rejection a traumatic experience? Is rejection a traumatic experience? What's rejection? Okay, this is it. Let me paint you the context. <laughs> yeah. We have, let me paint you a few context examples. You were growing up and you were always considered the naughty one. So when you wanted to have a voice, nobody listened to you and you felt like you were not loved, you felt rejected. Or you did not do well in school amongst your siblings. Therefore, you were not given, you didn't feel like you are loved as much as your siblings who did well. So you interpret this as rejection. But now, those are just a few examples here and there. Basically, when you are growing up, you are not on the spotlight. Mm -hmm. And this was very evident. This was very clear. Mm -hmm. So now you've grown up. You're an adult. You're mm -hmm. doing very well for yourself. You have good friends. You have a family. You're very well known and respected. But you can't shake off the fact that when you are growing up, you are not given that attention mm -hmm. that you wanted. And you've always interpreted it as rejection. rejection. So <coughs> is this a traumatic experience or is this just a bad case scenario of rejection in your own interpretation or please and tell us what is rejection is this rejection um i don't know if it's a traumatic experience yeah. again trauma is how we respond mm -hmm. and when we respond it's because we feel so distressed yeah we don't have the capacity to manage it I see. so we bury it and then it shows up in other things mm. but it may not also be distressing to that extent mm -hmm. you just experience the examples you've given and i develop what we call um core beliefs about ourselves uh -huh. mm -hmm. and the core belief here is i'm not good enough wow. i'm not worthy okay and so when you carry that it may not necessarily have been from a traumatizing event but you are moving around life mm. with a core belief that you're not worthy. Wow. You're not good enough. And so you want to try and <coughs> prove that I am worthy. Mm. And so you go out of your way to please people or you want to be like, I don't care. Mm. I don't care what you think. So you go the aggressive way. Mm. So are you seeing those patterns? Yes. You know, there's no straight path. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But you believe certain things because of your experiences. You believe certain things about yourself. Yeah. You know, it's my fault I was sexually molested. Mm. You blame yourself. Mm. Uh, I should have spoken out. I should have said no when you're older. Okay. And so that means I am weak. So you have a belief 
a core belief that you're weak. Mm. Okay? And so how do you go about life proving to everyone either I'm weak by being woye and being the victim all the time mm. or I will show them mm. that nobody can mess with me again. Wow. Mm. So you go there aggressive. Yeah, aggressive. The so again not necessarily trauma trauma but events that have caused you because you have interpreted them certain way a certain way they have caused you to have certain beliefs mm. which run your life mm. yeah. i see so how do you, how do you then distinguish between uh somebody who is dealing with a traumatic experience yeah. and healthy human interaction because you know they say uh asking or, or defining what normal is it's like saying how long is a piece of string it depends is there like what we would what we would consider normalcy and if so how do you then distinguish which side of the spectrum maybe you sit i'm going to use your answer okay. which depends okay <laughs> <laughs> right cuz normalcy is on a continuum mm -hmm. you know it's from one end of extremely not normal then we have the 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 middle part mm -hmm. and we are always moving towards that extreme mm -hmm. uh, that continuum to well-being you know a sense of well-being where you are happy about where you are you have meaningful relationships you feel like you can you're coping well with life issues and then something happens mm. and it takes away some of your resilience or some of your coping skills but you can bounce back mm. but then sometimes it's too much maybe it's repeated uh maybe many things have happened or it's severe then it tends you towards a space of maybe anxiety so we have to look at it in terms of uh, a continuum from negative 5 to positive 5 yes <laughs> you yes know? Mm. and we are always moving to our goal as 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 therapists is to help you to flourish and to keep moving towards positive 5 i see where maybe not everyone or we may never get there but are we making that progress mm. i see yeah. i see Fanny is a good too has a question I'll read it in Swahili then I'll translate it Muda mzuri niulize hivi ni umri gani kiwewe cha utoto kinaridhi utumziwa ma kiwewe is a trauma childhood tra oh. trauma mm -hmm. yes. kiwewe cha utoto chaweza kugeuzwa she's asking whether childhood trauma one can be changed and at what stage the when you're an adult is it uh, revealed or is it uh, is it something that can be revealed at any particular moment in your life yeah um at any uh, at any point mm. again depending on your life experiences mm -hmm. for example sometimes you will not really have to deal with it until you have children wow or you have that boss yeah. okay so, mm. so it will be triggered by something yeah. for it to come out yes for mm. it to for you to begin to want to work on it okay. mm. you probably have been living with it you've been using ways of coping because we actually start coping right from when they it happened when it happens yeah, yeah. then you realize by 16 you're such a people pleaser mm. I see. and then you're unable to say no at 25 you know mm. so it's such a, an ongoing you know wow. sort of thing that um, we we can really place a uh, a mark on it okay. the other one mm. is can you heal yes can someone heal from mm. it kiwewe cha utoto chaweza kugeuzwa or can you change from it yes mm. uh, in fact now uh, we are, we are talking more we, we there's something we are calling post traumatic growth mm -hmm. where there's some people who actually benefit from that trauma Okay. They, they 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 turn it into something meaningful for them mm -hmm. and it's a thing now it's mm -hmm. a thing that can be measured and all that I you see. know that, that there is there is this post traumatic growth it's not available to everyone mm. you know like you you experience um you get uh, molested when you were young you go through so many issues and all that you work through it mm -hmm. so to, post traumatic growth is not just having a foundation because you 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 were sexually molested mm. but being able to work through it and develop resources that cause you to form a foundation yeah mm. to fight for you know because you've worked on yourself you, you've worked on yourself yeah. Yeah. it has to be yeah it has to be born out of a place of healing yes. okay so for there is that so you can actually heal and find meaning from it mm -hmm. okay but then you call you can just still heal okay mm -hmm. and remember i said earlier healing is a process mm. so there's no point saying ah now i have healed mm -hmm. because you never know what will come later that will trigger something and then you sort of slip back a little mm -hmm. and that's why self compassion is very important you have to be patient with yourself mm. you will think you have even just like grieving mm. 
Mm. You will think you have moved on sort of and, and you're okay, you've accepted. And then one day you just hear someone on the radio who sounds like your mom. Oh. Yeah. And you go and you just go back, back yeah. to square one. And you're like, you I have a problem with that grieving. I go to people's funerals. I start remembering the relative of mine who died. Yeah. Mm. So people are like, why are you crying so hard? And this yeah. is a colleague. Mm. I'm remembering that lost relative yeah. because I had not dealt with it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So we need to look at life generally as a continuum. Right. You know, as a process rather than as points in time. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can heal or you can start the process of healing and become better. And you can also not heal and just live by managing it? Not managing. Mm. I wouldn't say managing. Because would managing, say I would say coping. 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 Mm. Yeah, oh, yes, and yes. coping now it gets you into behaviors that okay. are not productive and oh. are not healthy. Okay. I see, yeah. I see. Let's, uh, let's take some calls and see what people are saying. Hello, Stella. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hello. I'm very fine, and you? I'm doing very well. We have an amazing guest in the studio with us who's giving us some information. I hope you've been listening. Yes, I've been listening, and uh, I welcome you, first of all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, yes, do, you do you have a question boy, for, for Dr. Carol? Yes, I have a question. Mm-hmm. But let me first say hi to Karigo and Barbara. Hi, Stella. How are you? I'm very fine. How are you, my darling? What are your thoughts today? Okay, I had a question. Mm -hmm. How can you help a special need child or a challenged child mm -hmm. to be able to overcome the past traumas? And how can you read their their mind about the trauma that they are going through mm, okay what, yeah. what, what are your thoughts yeah. thank you stella and i think that's a very valid. Uh, mm -hmm. you have another one no it, it's about the pickup line uh, oh, stella, okay. stella can we hold that thought for today just for today because we are Hello? about to go on a break let's allow dr Tari to answer mm -hmm. that question Okay, so okay. let me go ahead and, and, and attempt mm -hmm. yes. to, to address it. I think that, first of all, it's important that that child goes through, uh, you know, assessment to be sure to be to ascertain mm -hmm. what the special needs space is. <coughs> um, just really have a diagnosis because, again, we, we just go about life trying to manage things that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And now we have many spaces where you can do that, even at county level. Yes. Yes. So I think that's important that that happens. How do you get into their mind to know what their trauma, mm -hmm. what, th what they've gone through? You probably will still need a specialist mm -hmm. if you feel like they are mm -hmm. traumatized. Um, then you do that. And I always say, even as a parent, seek support. You're dealing with a lot. First, you're dealing with a child who has a special needs, which is outside the norm. Yes. Okay, so it comes with its special struggles. And then if you're suspecting that they are, um, they've been traumatized, then mm -hmm. you're also dealing with guilt, for example. You're mm -hmm. dealing with, did I bring this child into this world to, to, uh, to go through to what go they through might have yeah. gone through? So, so Find help for yourself as mm. well. I mean, I would just directly point you to specialists at that at that level. I see. Yeah, and there's there's real va there's real value in actually taking time to actually see a specialist mm -hmm. and answer some of these questions because a lot of these things you can't do by yourself. We yeah. don't. We're just not equipped, and that's why we have uh, experts like yourself yeah. who can kind of guide us through through this journey. Right. Now, if you are just joining us, we are the adults in the room, and we're having a very honest conversation with doc uh, Dr. Carol Chakua, who's here to talk to us about overcoming childhood trauma. And I hope that you're learning a thing or two. Jackie, I see you calling and to all the other callers, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break, uh, but we shall be answering and sampling some more of your views as soon as we get back from the short break. Dr. Carol Chakua in the building who has been schooling all of us here on the importance of not just seeking therapy, but looking to understand yourself on a deeper level so that you can actually, uh, as you said, lean more towards positive five as opposed to negative five. So in the spirit of uh, talking about healing, uh, we spoke a little bit about how the work actually begins, uh, but what should someone actually expect from the process of healing? Because obviously, it's it's a like you said, it's not a linear journey. There's going to be many ups and downs, and I think some of the misconceptions that people have is that I go see a therapist and they will help me solve all my problems, and I'll be 
normal or quote unquote yeah. normal, you know. So how does that process actually look like? Yeah, I wish it was just, you know, give you three three times one times three tablet. Right, know? yes. Oh nice. <laughs> you take it three times yes. of, even for a month, you yes. know, and, and you're good to go. Yes. It's not and because we are human beings, we are not uh, pieces of wood, yeah. you know, to be fixed. Yeah. We are human beings and our processes are different. So I think for me for real First of all, accept, expect the me, the process to be messy mm -hmm. yeah. and painful. Ebu define messy. You like messy. <laughs> no, no, no. So no, that no. you know where to get it. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. You know me, I've done therapy. I continue to do therapy. Yeah. But for yeah. anyone who's listening, yeah. what does messy look like? Messy means mm. you're going to start feeling things you don't want to feel. Exactly. You start being uncomfortable. Yeah. You'll be angry your yeah. therapist will make you go there and say this i am angry yeah. some people have never acknowledged that they are angry you mm. know because uh, you know we are told to be nice nice mm. Mm. and even just anger itself so expect to feel angry mm. and you, it will be a very new feeling a new mm. emotion for you mm. okay and and thank god you're in a faith, safe space so mm. you are taught and you're given skills on how to process that and, and and also do what you need to do whether it's letting go forgiveness you know things like that yeah. so accept expect it to be messy mm. expect uh, not f about apart from anger it will be painful you mm. cry you probably not sleep well mm. so so i tell my I, I tell my clients you know that the first few sessions it's, it's not gonna be easy mm. you will not want to come back mm. okay and we get that we get those last minute um i can't make it i can't make it yes. oh, oh, we get those traffic. Yes. Traffic. Oh, it's traffic it's traffic my work schedule yes. 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 so you understand when someone is yes, doing that yes you get it you do mean. you like uh, try and coerce them or convince them or you just let them be to the, find themselves the thing is to let them know what to expect and mm. you put systems in place you know mm. you don't want someone who's forever counseling on you and you had scheduled that hour so yeah Mm. Yeah. You schedule last minute, you kind of pay for that session. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, yeah. there's, there's some, some consequences, consequences there. Yeah. 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 So it's in your best interest to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. exactly. But yes. you do it also with a lot of compassion. Yes. You know, and you, you talk about, in fact, for me, that becomes a, an opportunity to talk about what, why are you feeling stuck. Mm. And then it opens up another world for them. Then they have a better understanding of themselves. They have a better understanding of how they've been using these things to also miss out on life on, and sabotage themselves and wow. things like that. So every setback is also an opportunity for mm. them to learn about themselves mm. give them that mm. yeah so expect it to be messy mm. and number two i think the important thing is to really um acknowledge mm. yeah let's acknowledge you 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 you, you saying that a lot mm. and it's 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 a very heavy it's acknowledgement is hard guys mm. it's, it's so 70 difficult percent of the process yeah you know? it is mm. yeah what are the few what are the what are a few trauma misconceptions out there mm. what are the few misconceptions that people have with trauma say about trauma let's make it clear <laughs> i think one is that it's it's weak um. it's for weak people like people who react to those traumatizing mm. events uh. there's something fundamentally wrong with them right okay and that's what really stigmatizes people you know for wow. even seeking help mm -hmm. yeah i think that's the biggest one the other one is why are you bringing this up now it's happened it's mm. in the past can we leave the things in the past and you know the way we like using the word forgiveness let's just forgive mm. and forget forget. And let go we are oh. africans Ac yes we are africans <laughs> we don't <laughs> bring this up mm. these things right. up mm. you know or the one we used a couple of years ago accept and move on mm. <laughs> <You know? Yes. laughs> accept and move on and yet we don't realize that acceptance is the last stage of mm. a whole process of grieving you know Mm. Yeah. yeah so there's there's a process that yeah. goes into it mm. yeah there's a lady by the name josephin she's asking uh Daktari, what do you do when you want to empathize with someone because they feel they underwent some sort of trauma yet they do not speak at all mm. when you want to empathize and yet they don't speak at all that means they're not opening up mm. yes or they're not sharing but yeah. you, you can sense Clearly it or you, maybe you know something something happened yeah and i think it's similar to what you asked earlier you know mm. it's it's really going back to is where you are working for you mm. and you know what 
you cannot push someone to be ready for something if they're not ready for it. Mm. So it's asking those questions. Is where you are working for you? Mm. Are you okay where you are at? Are you okay with the relationships that you're having the way they are? Mm. I think just getting them to, to, to look beyond that just you have an issue. Mm. You have an issue and you need to deal with it. And people don't like going there. I don't like being told I have issues. Of right. course. Yes. Nobody likes hey. being told they have issues. <laughs> so really, it's really figuring out to to show them that it's in their best interest and you're actually looking out for their good mm. and for their well-being mm. in the in the long term. Mm. Yeah. I see. Well, Firstly, I, I know that you have to run, so we're going to try not to hold you for too much longer. Yeah. But firstly, I want to say on behalf of everyone here, we're so thankful for, to have you here to come Kapisha. and share your knowledge. Kapisha. Yes, Kapisha. Uh, because like we've said, there's many things that we each deal with that mm. we don't get a chance to talk about. And I'm sure there's people out there who are listening who have heard what you've said and have had maybe some light bulbs have gone off. Mm. And this, in my opinion, is sort of the starting process of now starting to actually look at your at your life. Right. But before we let you go, please tell us where we can find you, plug everything that you do, and let people know how they can get in contact with you if they require your services. Okay. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me. This mm. was fun. I no, enjoyed yeah. it. Oh, yeah. great. Yay. Great. Yeah. Thank you for gracing the occasion. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm at Dr. Karo Chakua on Dr. Karo is DR. Mm -hmm. Carol Chakua on mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am, uh, I just had to say that. Yes. <laughs> so you follow you are like, I Some of my that. friends who are listening, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then um, um, phone 0707 222 002. Reach out. Um, drcaro.co.ke is our website. It's mm -hmm. drcaro with dr.co.ke. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I have usually give a free session for parents. I, I'm j I just work with parents mm -hmm. only. Uh, sorry yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> for now at yes. least. I but I have present. really, really good referrals yes. for, for other therapies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have usually have a 30 minute free consult just to figure out do I even need this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where am I at? You know, yeah. and even with that three f uh, 30 minute free consult, even if you don't come back you still live with uh information good 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 tips mm -hmm. yeah. so you can always reach out 0707 triple two double zero two and book at the, your free session with us or drcaro.co.ke i have a book too oh, oh. Right. oh yeah. tell us about I your book i should have brought that book yes, <laughs> yes. Good. yes. i'm yeah it's i'm really learning to market <laughs> 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 I tell you are not a market. I, I get lost in what I do I that know. I forgot to plug it in. Right. But I'm learning I'm getting there. Next mm -hmm. time you guys bring we will remind yes. you. Yes. Anyway, mm. it's called Parenting with Your Heart in Mind. Wow. Mm -hmm. An amazing book for you to just reflect on your own self-awareness. Mm -hmm. To deal with those triggers. Like I get you to start thinking. It's like a it's a 12-day journey. Mm -hmm. right. And at the end of each chapter, there's exercises that you can do by yourself or with a group in fact i really encourage people to do it in groups mm -hmm. because groups? yeah yeah because mm -hmm. there's just a lot of value also mm. from experiences mm. it's real it's raw it's not your regular parenting book of mm. discipline tips of mm. this and that no mm -hmm. it's more about focusing on yourself and becoming a better person I parenting so that heart. yeah par parenting with your heart in mind mm. parenting with your, your heart in mind where yes. is the book yeah. available Dr. online drcaro.co.ke mm -hmm. you can order it there again mm. on uh, uh, contacts anyone in the diaspora it's on amazon it's mm. on kindle mm -hmm. uh, it's on textbook center Fantastic. i mean they're just it's all over the place okay. but you can ask us uh, from us directly and we'll be able to Fantastic. Amazing. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I know you were here very early, which is a blessing for us because we know. love seeing we love seeing our guests come in early because we not only can prepare ourselves for the conversation, but it also gives them a chance to see how we operate as a team. Yeah. So it's an absolute pleasure and a blessing to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, It has we've had Dr. Carol uh, Chakua in the studio talking to us about overcoming childhood trauma. I hope you learned a thing or two. Do not forget to plug into all of the plugs that she has told you. I'm definitely going to be looking into this book because I may not be a parent yet, but I'm preparing myself for that time. We are the adults in the room and we shall be right back. Spice FM.